Hello everyone and welcome back to Lost Planeswalker. You're here with me, Jesse, the Lost Planeswalker, and today is the first day of spoiler season for the Outlaws of Thunder Junction set. This has been a very interesting set if you've been watching any videos or if you've seen my Before You Buy, you kind of have an idea of what kind of cards to expect. There's a bunch of really, really cool cards that I want to show off and just so you guys know, the video is going to go all the legendary creatures we received today, the big score cards, breaking news cards, and special guest cards, which are all bonus sheets in this set, and then the rest of the main set cards. I tried to order it this way because I thought that's what most people are going to be interested in. So if you want to dip out early, which I hope you don't, you can just do that. So starting out, the legendary creatures. Our first legendary creature is Annie Flash the Veteran. Three red, green, and a white legendary creature human rogue with flash. When Annie Flash the Veteran enters the battlefield, if you cast it, return target permanent card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. When Annie Flash becomes tapped, exile the top two cards of your library. You may play those cards this turn. Pretty interesting commander here. We can see some built-in flash effects that we want to work around. And in addition, whenever we tap it, whether that's to activate something, maybe we put an equipment on it that does something, or we attack with it, we get to exile some stuff that we can play. But this was the first of many different card frames we're receiving in this set, which is the Wanted posters. You can see here we have Wanted Annie Flash the Veteran, and kind of looks like an old-timey out west Wanted poster for, you know, some bad guys. But this is a very cool frame. But let's look at the next card, which is Fortune Loyal Steed. Two white ledger creature beast mount so mounts are the brand new creature type in this set and i guess it's something that players have been asking for for a long time because how it works is saddle is very similar to crew except this is always a creature versus when you crew a vehicle it's not a creature until it is crewed. This is always a creature, but you get additional benefits for saddling creatures onto mounts. So when Fortune Loyal Steed enters the battlefield, you scry two. Whenever Fortune attacks while saddled at the end of combat, exile it in up to one creature that saddled it this turn. Then return those cards to the battlefield under their owner's control. So right off the bat, I can already see Annie and Fortune being great partners in a deck because you get to saddle Fortune, any flashes brings it back you can get something else from your graveyard potentially getting fortune from your graveyard because it is three mana so this is a really cool effect that i'm sure any any players will be playing and a really cool effect for fortune and i really see this more as a 99 card in most decks probably in my opinion my favorite creature to find i really love this brother and sister but we have giza the hellraiser so giza is three black black ledger creature human warlock with ward two and pay two life Skeletons and zombies you control get plus one plus one and have menace and whenever you commit a crime create two tapped two two blue and black zombie rogue creature tokens this ability triggers only once each turn so to commit a crime is to target an opponent anything they control and or cards in their graveyard that is a crime so basically if you're targeting an opponent in any way possible whether it's negative or positive that is committing a crime and giza is all about that giving you two tapped two two creatures so they're going to be tapped but on a full turn cycle you can possibly make eight different blue and black zombie rogue creature tokens which is really neat in addition this is my favorite wanted poster of the day you can see giza there just saying hello and it's just adorable i mean this is exactly what i would expect from giza so this is an awesome card i am going to build a commander deck around this card so if you're interested in seeing something like that please stay tuned that's something i'm probably going to be doing later next week so just keep an eye out for that if you're interested so next up we have the first commander card that we got they spoiled all the commander decks a while ago so we kind of knew who the commanders were going to be but we didn't see what they did so we have gaunty canny acquisitor two black green and a blue legendary creature aetherborn rogue spells you cast but don't own cost one less to cast and whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player look at the top card of that player's library then exile it face down you may play that card for as long as it remains exiled and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell gaunty is a very cool creature from kaladesh so it's very cool that he gets a star in his own commander deck and gaunty does some pretty interesting things i think discounting your opponent's spells and just being able to play them is pretty cool in addition he says one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player not one or more players so in one turn you could exile three cards and kind of have hopefully some good stuff to cast maybe it's not all lands but i'm very excited to see what else is in that deck but next up we have honest rustin one black green legend creature human warlock 
When Honest Rustin enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Creature spells you cast cost one less to cast. Honest Rustin is pretty great. I haven't really built a deck based around cheating out, you know, Golgari themed cards, but I could see this going in a ton of different decks that have black and especially green in it, because green has all of those big creatures you want to discount. So I think this could be a really cool deck. Very excited to see what else you can do there. And next up, we have the second Planeswalker of the set, which is something we were told we weren't going to be getting, because we were told we're only going to be getting one Planeswalker per set, which was already Oko. But now we have Jace Reawaken. Just two blue mana, Ledger Creature, Planeswalker Jace, but a kind of a downside to him, you can't cast a spell during your first, second, or third turns of the game. I'm not quite sure why they put this restriction on here. Maybe they just did some playtesting and it was too good, costed at, you know, two blue pips to be cast any sooner than turn three. So that's interesting, but plus one, draw a card, then discard a card. Plus one, you may exile an online card with mana value three or less from your hand if you do it becomes plotted, which then means you can just cast it for free on a later turn. And then minus six until end of turn, whenever you cast a spell, copy it. You may choose new targets for the copy. So something interesting about this tick down here is that all those cards you've plotted, you still technically cast when you cast them from exile. So you could put a ton of stuff into exile, then minus six him and get a ton of copy effects for all of those spells that you plotted away. Pretty cool, Jace. You know, I don't play Planeswalkers competitively in any decks. You know, if they're just in a deck, I just add them for fun and they usually die. So I have no idea if Jace here is actually that powerful or not. But let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of this Jace? You know, obviously Jace reawakened. We can see there's like some Ashiok horns sticking out of him. You know, and in the original art, you can kind of see the shadow form of Ashiok. So I don't really know what's going on here. I think there's some Ashiok doings, but I'm not quite sure. So maybe we'll learn more about that later on. And our next legendary creature is Jolene the Plundering Pologist. One red and a green legendary creature human mercenary. Whenever you attack with one or more creatures with power four or greater, create a treasure token. One in a red, sack a treasure token. Jolene Plundering Pologist deals one damage to any target. So Jolene is from New Capenna and she was Jolene the Plundering Queen, which was very fun. But this is also a great low cost legend she is already a four power creature so on attack you're gonna be making treasure tokens but she does have a lower defense so you're probably gonna have to pair her up with some stuff to get that full power out of her but this is a pretty neat card and probably pretty good 99 card so next we have kellen the kid obviously we got some wild west themes here with calling him the kid in addition this is the first kellen card we've received that doesn't have an adventure cost on him which is quite interesting i'm not sure if that has any story ramifications but this is also a band card kellen's only ever been two colors so this is quite interesting to see kind of took a departure from what I was expecting. But Kellen is green, white, blue, ledger creature, human, fairy, rogue, with flying and lifelink. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, you may cast a permanent spell with equal or lesser mana value from your hand without paying its mana cost. If you don't, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. So the one comment I had when I immediately saw this card is why isn't it also red or one of those other pips, a red pip? Because this would be the perfect card to showcase all that impulsive red card draw that we've wanted to, you know, be able to just take advantage of. You know, there's a lot of good ways, especially with plot in this set, to put a ton of things into exile very easily. But Kellen just gave us the perfect opportunity here with Red to make a super powerful commander that cares all about impulsive card draw and things being cast from exile. And it's just a shame that that didn't quite happen. Now, there's a lot of really great cards here, and I'm not saying this isn't a cool commander, but I just really would have liked to see that instead. After that, we have Karam, Violent Cacophony, two blue red ledger creature zombie whore with flying. Whenever you cast your second spell each turn, put a plus one plus one counter on Karam, Violent Cacophony, and draw a card. This is a great card in any is it deck. This is cards I like to play because they just give me stuff for just playing more spells. So this is definitely a card I'm going to be putting in some of my is it decks. The Zav Familiar Stranger, one blue black ledger creature shapeshifter. Whenever you commit a crime, put a plus one plus one counter on the Zav Familiar Stranger. Then you may exile a card from a graveyard. If a creature card was exiled this way, you may have Lazav become a copy of that card until end of turn. This ability triggers only once each turn. This is a pretty cool form of Lazav. 
I'm not quite sure how you take advantage of this. I'm sure it's got to be some like combo cards where you put them in your graveyard or from somebody else's graveyard and you're able to combo off and do some cool things. But I always love seeing new versions of Lazav because it's a cool mechanic. It's always been a cool mechanic. This one is as well. And this is also one of the first cards that we've shown off that we just had a version of this printed in the last main set. And now we get another version of this, which is kind of crazy. Obviously, Kellen is going to be in all of these sets but I didn't expect that from Lazav. So next up, a very fiery Dwarf Berserker. We have Magda, the Horde Master. One in a red, Ledger Creature, Dwarf Berserker. Whenever you commit a crime, create a tapped treasure token. This ability triggers only once each turn. And then sack three treasures. Create a 4-4 red scorpion dragon creature token with flying and haste. Activate only as a sorcery. This is a rather cheap commander that has a really cool upside. I never built a Magna deck myself when we had the original version, but this one sounds pretty interesting, so I might give it a shot. We'll see. But this is definitely a cool deck that I think definitely deserves to go in some decks that are just focused around red hasty creatures or treasures for sure. Then after that, we have Myram Herd Whisperer, a green and a white ledger creature human druid. As long as it's your turn, mounts and vehicles you control have hexproof. Whenever a mount or vehicle you control attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on it. This is a unconventional vehicle and mount commander, which is really cool to see. Obviously, we got the druid here who cares about these creatures. So I think we're going to be seeing a lot more mounts in green and white probably then. But in addition to that, you get to power up those mounts and vehicles, which is pretty neat. You know, there's not a lot of things that do that. So this is probably a pretty cool playable mount and vehicle commander. In addition, your mounts, if they get big enough, maybe can crew your vehicles or, you know, vice versa. So this is a cool effect. I really like it. Next is one of my favorite vampires from Innistrad. We have Olivia Opulent Outlaw. One red, white, black, ledger creature, vampire, assassin. Now this is the second commander deck creature that we're showing off here. Olivia has flying lifelink. Whenever one or more outlaws you control deal combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. So an outlaw is categorized as an assassin, a mercenary, a pirate, a rogue, and a warlocks are all outlaws. Then three, sack two treasures, put two plus one plus one counters on each creature you control, activate only as a sorcery. Olivia is very good. I don't know what kind of cards are going to go in the rest of these decks, but I think Olivia, just going to call it now, is the strongest out of all the decks. The last time we got a Mardu commander, it was insanely powerful in a main set. It was Dahada, and I can just see, again, the Mardu deck just blowing all the other decks out of the water, being so powerful. Just give all your stuff flying, or, you know, take Assassins, Mercenaries, Pirates, Rogues, or Warlocks, you know, that just can just get through and deal damage, and this is going to be insane. So I'm very excited to see what else is in store for this deck, especially if Edgar is the co-commander in this deck, which I'm very hopeful he is. I'd like to see another version of Edgar that would just be fun to play that's not overpowered. But uh, Olivia, opulent outlaw, very cool. Next is Rakdos the Muscle, two black black red legendary creature demon mercenary flying in trample. Whenever you sack another creature, exile cards equal to its mana value from the top target player's library. Until your next end step, you may play those cards and mana of any type can be spent to cast those. Then, sack another creature, Rakdos the Muscle gains Indestructible until end of turn, tap it, activate only once each turn. So Rakdos the Muscle wants to swing in and deal some damage. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the sack effect, which gives him Indestructible and taps him, can be triggered after he's already attacking. So you can just basically give him Indestructible when he's attacking, get some benefits. After you sack a creature, you could exile a ton of stuff and maybe just play off of your opponent's decks. That would be a very cool theme for Rakdos style decks, just basically playing more like a Demir deck, but just giving you a ton of access to who knows what's in everybody's decks and maybe pulling off some really cool combos by playing cards that you couldn't normally play because you can cast them for any cost. So I can definitely see Rakdos being a very popular commander and very powerful as well. Next up is a commander I thought we were probably going to get all the way from Kamigawa is Satoru the Infiltrator. Just for a blue and a black lizard creature human ninja rogue with menace, whenever Satoru the Infiltrator and or one or more other non-token creatures enter the battlefield under your control, if none of them were cast or no mana was spent to cast them, draw a card. 
I think Satoru here is really built around the new plot mechanic and effects like that because you're paying nothing. You've already paid the cost to put it into exile and you're casting it for free. So that's really what we're looking for here and just refilling your hand and maybe being able to plot more cards and do more stuff like that. I think it's a cool effect. Uh, I'm not sure how effective it's going to be overall, but pretty neat creature. Next up is our third commander creature with Stella Lee Wild card. One blue, red, ledger creature, human rogue. With whenever you cast your second spell each turn, exile the top card of your library. Until the end of your next turn, you may play that card. Then you can tap it to copy target instant or sorcery you control. You may choose new targets for the copy. Activate only if you cast three or more spells this turn. So this commander was all about casting a bunch of little spells and then getting big benefits for casting a bunch of stuff. And you can see that in the card perfectly. I thought potentially this was going to be built around a storm effect, which it kind of is not entirely. Copying, I don't believe, casts as casting spells so you're not going to add more storm there but the whole idea is there you get benefit for casting more spells and maybe you can duplicate your best thing to get some great results so stella lee wild child is a very cool next another one of my favorite innistrad cards is the gitrog ravenous rider three black green laser creature frog horror mount so we added a mount here probably because thalia was riding him in the last set but he has Trample, Haste, whenever the Gitrog Ravenous Rider deals combat damage to a player, you may sack a creature that saddled it this turn. If you do, draw X cards and put up to X land cards from your hand onto the battlefield tap, where X is the sacrificed creature's power. The Gitrog monster is insane here. This is probably one of the more powerful cards in this deck. I will definitely be building a deck around this, so stay tuned for that. But being able to refill your hand and just dump lands onto the battlefield is insane. Especially if you play a big search effect and put a ton of lands into your hand. And then you just sack something big and get to put those onto the battlefield. Ramping faster than a lot of decks can even handle. So the Gitrog Ravenous Rider is a very cool card. Next up, we have the key to the vault. One in a blue legendary artifact equipment. Whenever a equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, look at that many cards from the top of their library. You may exile a non-land card from among them put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order and you may cast the exile card without paying its mana cost this is a good effect i don't think i need to say anything more you get to exile cards for how much damage you dealt then you get to cast one of those for free i mean that could be an extra turn spell that could be you know a really big creature that could be just something insane so i think that this is an awesome card this is an awesome effect you're going to want to put it on a big creature and just get a ton of value off of it and it's going to be a threat when it hits the board so next up we have tiny bone joins up and this is a legendary enchantment for a single black mana when tiny bones joins up enters the battlefield any number of target players each discard a card whenever a legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control any number of target players each mill a card and lose one life again legendary matters cards very cool effect you know everybody gets a discard one and then you just get to continually mill and deal damage with more legendaries that enter and that could add up if your deck is just full of legendary creatures next we have a vile smasher gleeful grenader black and a red legendary creature goblin mercenary whenever another outlaw enters the battlefield under control vile smasher gleeful grenader deals one damage to target opponent this one's okay i see this definitely as a 99 card it is pretty cool but you really have to build around this so i see this definitely being way stronger in a standard deck than really commander in general next up we have Varaska joins up black and a green legendary enchantment when Varaska joins up enters the battlefield put a death touch counter on each creature you control Whenever a legendary creature you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. This is great. Giving you advantage just on your commander dealing damage, you getting to get card draw off that is insane. In addition, you just make your entire board a death touchy threat, so they're either going to want to block or not. If you're playing a token deck, maybe a sapperling deck in these colors, that's insane. Fungal deck in these colors, it's just crazy good. So this is a very cool effect. Two, two mana just seems too cheap to me. I mean, this is definitely three or four mana for effect that good. And then we have Varaska the Silencer. One black green lizard creature, Gorgon Assassin with Death Touch. Whenever a non-token creature an opponent controls dies, you may pay one. If you do, return that card to the battlefield tapped under your control. It's a treasure artifact with tap, sack this artifact, add one mana of any color, and it loses all other card types. 
I'm not really sure how you build this card. I mean, I'm guessing what you do is you just keep mana up, and when creatures die, you exile them, and you have a bunch of treasure tokens on your side of the board. I don't really think green has much to do with treasure. I mean, you get to ramp maybe faster, which is cool. Black has some treasure support, so that's kind of interesting, but this is a cool effect. I'd really like to see how somebody builds this deck, so if you do, just let me know. I'd be really interested. And the last card in the Legendary Creatures category is Yuma Proud Protect. 5, red, green, white. Holy cow, 5 is a lot of mana. But it's a legendary creature, human ranger, with this spell costs 1 less to cast for each land card in your graveyard. When Yuma, Proud Protector, enters a battlefield or attacks, you may sack a land if you do draw a card. Whenever a desert card is put into your graveyard from anywhere, create a 4-2 green plant warrior creature token with reach. Okay, that makes a lot more sense now. That cost can basically be reduced to nothing, which is very cool because I love effects that help discount commander tax. So you can basically cast this for just Anaya later on in the game. So it's a cool effect when you need it. But also creating 4-2 green plant warrior creature tokens is pretty sick. You do have to put desert cards into your graveyard and I'm not sure if there's a desert basic land type. Maybe we're gonna get some in this set. You know, otherwise this is kind of hard to do unless you're just sacking all your deserts when Yuma enters and attacks. But 6-6 six, six seems pretty powerful. I'm looking forward to this deck and I'm looking forward to see what other cards they put in this deck to help power him up. But before we talk about the big score, this would be a good time to say if you aren't subscribed to my channel and you're enjoying this video, please consider doing so. I would really appreciate the support. And uh, yeah, let's dive right into the big score. We only received four cards today in the big score, so this is going to go a little bit quicker. But we have Oltec Matterweaver. Two in a white creature human artificer with whenever you cast a creature spell, choose one. Create a 1-1 one, one colorless gnome artifact creature token or create a token that's a copy of target artifact token you control. That seems pretty good to me. So we do have to cast the creatures, which is important. This doesn't just trigger off the creatures entering, but we can create some pretty insane tokens off of this. Maybe you want to make more treasure tokens when you just play a creature. Maybe you have a very specific token. Maybe it's a creature token that's an artifact. Well, guess what? You get to make more of them. This seems like a pretty great card. I can definitely see this in any white deck that's you know, creature focused being very good. You know, this fits into a lot of different decks. So I'm very excited to see how this card comes out. Next up, we have Torpor Orb. This is an artifact with creatures entering the battlefield don't cause abilities to trigger. This is a reprint of a card. It's a pretty cool card. I'm not quite sure why they decided to print it here. Maybe there's just too many triggered abilities and they just wanted to give players a new chance to try this card. But next up, we have Transmutation Font. Five generic artifact. Tap, create your choice of a blood token, a clue token, or a food token. Three, sacrifice three artifact tokens with different names. Search your library for an artifact card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Activate only as a sorcery. Immediately, my mind goes straight to getting Academy Manufacturer onto the battlefield and having other cards in the deck that support clues, food, or treasure tokens. And then with Academy Manufacturer just getting those three tokens, paying three, and just pulling all of your best artifact cards out of your deck. I can see this card being very, very good, very busted, and kind of a lot of issues for your opponents. So this is definitely something that I'm going to look out for to destroy as soon as it enters because guess what? Having three differently named artifact tokens is not that hard anymore and you're just going to be able to get the best thing out of your deck every turn. So very cool card. And lastly in the big score we have Vaultborn Tyrant. This is a seven mana creature dinosaur with trample. Whenever Vaultborn Tyrant or another creature with power four or greater enters a battlefield under your control you gain three life and draw a card. Well that that seems pretty great. We just had to ban up the beanstalk from several formats because of an ability similar to this just being too powerful. But when Vaultborn Tyrant dies, if it's not a token, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. This has, you know, protection. It gives you lots of advantages for just playing big spells. Vaultborn Tyrant is a dinosaur, which all dinosaur decks care about you playing things with four power or greater. This is a problem. This is going to be a cool card. I don't think it's going to be too, too expensive in the end because it is seven man at a cast. And I think it's just going to go into a couple of decks, but I can see this as a pretty big threat if one of your friends plays this. 
Next up, we have the breaking news cards, which basically looks like old newspapers out in the Old West. You know, this theme is pretty neat. It says the Prosperity Post, you know, talking about prospecting, which is very fun. We have Clear Shot, two and a green instant. Target creature you control gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. It deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. All of these cards are going to be reprints. There shouldn't be any new cards here, I don't believe. But Clear Shot, pretty cool card. Love to see, uh, love to see it. Next, we got Dust Bowl, which is a land that adds a colorless mana or three sack of land. Destroy target non-basic land. Next up after that is Grindstone, one generic artifact, three and tap. Target player mills two cards. If two cards that share a color were milled this way, repeat this process. Pretty cool effect. You know, this is not as powerful as it used to be in my mind. I don't really know why this is a mythic card. I'm thinking this is really going to be powerful in a monocolored deck, but you know, there's a lot of decks that are more than one one color which okay that's actually going to be pretty good in as well but i i don't think this is going to go infinite you know you're going to be you're going to be milling a ton of lands and other stuff so this is cool effect and maybe you can get a bunch of cards with it but really mythic now this next card is definitely worthwhile of mythic we're getting mana drain and not only that a pretty sick version of mana drain if i have to say so myself this borderless option is beautiful i mean it's almost secret layer adjacent at this point but if you don't know what mana drain is it's blue blue instant counter target spell at the beginning of your next main phase add an additional add an amount of colorless mana equal to that spell's mana value now if you didn't know mana drain was printed at the time that we had mana burn which this effect makes a lot more sense in mana drain was actually a good counter spell but had some big drawbacks because if you didn't because if you weren't able to cast unspent mana it dealt damage to you in the form of mana burn but nowadays since they've changed that rule you just get a ton of mana on your turn so a lot of big benefits there mana drain great reprint very expensive card so i'm very excited to see that now of course we got a new oko in the main set we should get the original oko thieve of crowns one green blue legendary planeswalker oko plus two create a food plus one target artifact or creature loses all abilities and becomes a green elk creature with base power and toughness three three and minus five exchange control of target artifact or creature you control and target creature and opponent controls with power three or less cool new art here especially with that prosperity post frame the last card today for the breaking news is path to exile everybody knows what this card is single white mana instant exile target creature its controller may search the library for a basic land put that card on the battlefield tap then shuffle mysterious visitors save town vanishes yeah sounds right and with that we finally made it to the special guest cards i feel like i've been talking for an hour here even though it's not been that long but again these special guest cards are going to be all reprinted cards and these are pretty good you know like most of the special guest cards some of them are good some of them aren't but first off we have brazen borrower one blue blue creature fairy rogue with petty theft instant adventure return target non-land permanent and opponent controls to its owner's hand then when we cast it normally we have flash flying and brazen borrower can only block creatures with flying pretty cool card desert land desert tapped at a colorless or tap desert deals one damage to target attacking creature activate only during the end of combat step desertion is three blue blue instant counter target spell if it's an artifact or creature card is countered this way put that card onto the battlefield under your control instead of that owner's graveyard this is a pretty cool effect and i don't know if i've ever actually seen this card so this might be fun to put in some of my blue decks morbid opportunist two in a black creature human rogue with whenever one or more other creatures die draw a card this ability triggers only once each turn the thing i love about this card the most is it doesn't have to be your creatures it's just whenever one or more other creatures die so you're getting card draw off of your opponents killing creatures as well then we got mystic snake one green blue blue creature snake with flash when mystic snake enters battlefield counter target spell a lot of countering here but this is a pretty cool card it's a counter spell that has a creature body so kind of neat notion thief a notorious card and very very cool one especially this art here two blue black creature human rogue with flash if an opponent would draw a card except for the first one they draw in each of their draw steps instead of that player skips that draw and you draw a card port razor is next three red red creature orc pirate whenever port razor deals combat damage to a player untap each creature you control after this phase there's an additional combat phase port razor can't attack a player it has already attacked this turn if you can suit this up with some form of evasion this might be a great way to get some extra combat steps for pretty much nothing prismatic vista great land pay one 
life, sack it, search your library for a basic, put it on the battlefield, then shuffle. I don't believe we've gotten a reprint of this in a while, so pretty good special guest card. Scape shift, two green green, sorcery, sacrifice any number of lands, search your library for up to that many land cards, put them onto the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle. Obviously, with that land commander, scape shift is a no-brainer in that deck, so a very cool card to see in the special guest slot. And a card I didn't expect to see, we have Stoneforge Mystic, one in a white creature, core artificer, when Stoneforge Mystic enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an equipment card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle, then for one in a white tap, you may put an equipment card from your hand onto the battlefield. Stoneforge Mystic is a staple card in a ton of formats, it's a staple card in any equipment deck, it's always expensive because it's always good, so getting another reprint here is great to see. Especially with this cool art, we've never got like a core artificer in an old west, you know, sort of piratey outfit. So I love to see this here. And the last set of cards, as always, is the main set cards. And if you haven't dipped out here, I really appreciate you taking the time. I know this video is long, but we got an incredible amount of cards today. They just went all out for the first day of spoilers. So let's start out by talking about some land cycles real quick, because we got a new set of tap dual lands with a braid bluffs here you can see that this one is a land desert when it enters it enters tap when it enters it also deals one damage to target opponent so instead of gaining life or surveilling or whatever it deals a damage and you tap it to add a red or white and in addition on the screen here i'll be putting the other ones i'm not going to read them because they all do the same thing but this is a cool cycle i don't necessarily know where this goes you know i can see the gaining life ones because we have effects that gain life i guess there are some ones like committing a crime where you know we are going to be targeting an opponent so that's going to be a cool effect where you could use this but otherwise one damage in commander isn't going to be that important but in standard yeah four of these four damage for just playing lands pretty cool car card effect now the other cards i want to talk about very quickly are the fast lands that were originally printed in Kaladesh that we got here. So the first one here is Blooming Marsh. It's a land. Blooming Marsh enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or fewer other lands. So if you're playing a low mana cost deck, these lands are great to have because they come in and are immediately ready to do some work, but are kind of worse in the later game. But we got some really cool almost landscape here of this giant train that is being heisted in this set. And it goes across all of these lands. I'm going to line them up here so you can see see them all. And this is a really cool effect. I love seeing these being reprinted because they were kind of getting up there in price. I think they were reprinted in the Doctor Who decks, possibly. So the price did come down a bit. But seeing them again so soon is wonderful. Love to see these cards. I didn't expect to get these in this set. So very cool to see. So first creature here, we have Armored Armadillo. Single white creature Armadillo with Ward 1. Then three and a white Armored Armadillo gets plus x plus zero until end of turn where x is its toughness notably if you have a ton of mana to dump into this you can do this multiple times potentially surprising your opponent in dealing i don't know four eight maybe even 12 damage if you got enough mana to do so next up is bovine intervention one in a white instant destroy target artifact or creature its controller creates a 2-2 white ox creature token bovine intervention is my friend this is a pretty cool effect. I think um, we need more destroy artifact and creature spells in white. And for just one in a white, giving your opponent a 2-2 instead of their best thing seems pretty good to me. Cactrulantula is four green green creature plant spider. This spell costs one list to cast if you control a desert. It has reach, and when it becomes the target of a spell or ability an opponent controls, you may draw a card. Wow, that is a hard name to say. I had to do that a bunch of times and cut them all out because it was embarrassing how many times it took me to say that. But I love we're getting more plant support. It's been a really under printed archetype it's usually these commons and uncommons we get these plants and it would be really cool to build a plant deck that was entirely based around plants and this is a pretty cool card to add to that deck next is colossal rattle worm two green green colossal rattle worm has flash as long as you control a desert trample and one in a green exile colossal rattle worm from your graveyard search your library for a desert card put on the battlefield tapped then shuffle we got a lot of upside here. First off, we can cast this at flash speed for a big threat to maybe deal with someone's attacking creature. In addition, once it's in the bin, you can exile it and do a little bit more rampant. So definitely deck that care about deserts. This is a great card to include. Next up is a, another awesome card, Double Down. Three in a blue. Whenever you cast an outlaw spell, 
copy that spell. The best alibi is being in multiple places at the same time. So double down is pretty neat because it only focuses around outlaws. So that's your mercenaries, assassins, warlocks, you know, all of them, rogues. And blue is an okay color for those, obviously. We got a lot of those in blue. But I would have liked to see it in another color, maybe black. I think black, there's more black cards or, you know, in those outlaw stuff but yeah i mean this is this is cool still kind of a little confused on why it's mono blue but maybe it was too powerful in a different color next up is final showdown a single white mana and this is our first spree card and if you notice in the card frame there is a brand new kind of thing on these spree cards because this is a new effect which is that plus symbol and spree kind of works similar to entwine but let me explain how they're different right you can pay additional costs to do the additional abilities but spree here has different costs to do those additional abilities and that's why that plus is there so you're going to pay a single white to just cast this instant but in order to get extra benefits you actually have to pay more so for a single white and the first one so two mana all creatures lose all abilities until end of turn which right off the bat is a pretty sick effect but in addition if you want to cast that and the second ability or maybe you just want to cast the second ability it's up to you choose a creature you control it gains indestructible until end of turn then we have three white white destroy all creatures so realistically if you were going to cast this card in all of the spree effects it would cost you eight mana in total but you would make it so all creatures lose all abilities until end of turn you can give one of your creatures indestructible and then you can destroy all creatures so this board wipe is more expensive than most but this gets around most effects that say yeah you can't touch me you know we have indestructible it just negates all that by making them lose all of their abilities so pretty insane card especially in response if you're casting another board wipe and somebody's like you know what actually heroic intervention hey well guess what all creatures lose all abilities until end of turn there you go another way to circumvent that effect this is a pretty cool card i don't think it's gonna be the most expensive but i could see it actually being you know five ten bucks in the end Next up is form a posse, and that is X red and a white sorcery. Create X one one red mercenary creature tokens with tap. Target creature you control gets plus one plus zero until end of turn. Activate only as a sorcery. So red and white recently has been getting a ton of effects that create a ton of tokens for just very cheap. And a card like this in standard, I think is going to be insane. Recently, a card named Fourth Aerolingus, if you've never played it, it's from the Lord of the Rings Commander decks, is kind of a monster. Because it's similar to this, is X, red and a white, and you create a number of 2-2 two, two knight creature tokens with trample and haste and it also gives you monarch if you hit an opponent with it and this isn't as strong as that obviously this is an uncommon and i think that one's either rare or mythic but just being able to buff up one of your creatures by making a ton of little guys is pretty insane it's a really cool effect I can see this just going into any deck that cares about having it on a creature tokens. Recently, you know, we got that Convoke deck, and this would be a great card to add into there. So a lot of cool effects can be formed from Form a Posse. Next up is Free Strider Lookout. Two and a green creature human rogue with reach. Whenever you commit a crime, look at the top five cards of your library. You need to put a land card from among them on the battlefield tapped. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. This ability triggers only once each turn. This is a cool card. Free Strider Lookout in any landfall deck is pretty great. As long as you have ways to commit a crime by targeting you know an opponent in any other stuff this is going to be a cool effect i can definitely see myself just putting in this in a deck for all kinds of reasons so very much looking forward to getting a copy of this myself frontier seeker is one in a white creature human scout with when frontier seeker enters the battlefield look at the top five cards of your library you may reveal a mount creature card or a planes card from among them put it into your hand Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. We've got some other scouts or seeker-like cards before. Again, this is great. If you're having some mana issues in a mono white deck, this is definitely a way to do so. In addition, if you're playing a mount deck, probably a cool card to include. Next up is Great Train Heist. That train we've seen all over a bunch of these cards is another spree card, and it has a red plus 
So for two and a red, untap all creatures you control. If it's your combat phase, there's an additional combat phase after this phase. Plus two, creatures you control get plus one plus zero and gain first strike until end of turn. And plus red, choose target opponent. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to that player this turn, create a tapped treasure token. So pretty cool effect. If you have a bunch of creatures that aren't being blocked and gonna hit an opponent, you cast this red red and get to make a ton of treasure off it. For another two red, you get to buff all your creatures and for three red, you get an additional combat. So I love this effect seems very powerful and very cool so i'm gonna be looking forward to this card as well seeing how busted these spree cards get and what a mistake watsy made for printing them <laughs> uh probably one of the cards that made me laugh the most when i saw it is a hard bristle bandit one in a green creature plant rogue tap to add one man of any color whenever you commit a crime untap hard bristle bandit this ability triggers only once each turn visitors of the town of hard bristle found the locals to be quite prickly everything about this card is fantastic you can make jokes about you know a cactus in a trench coat you know this is just fantastic everything about it so i really want to get a co copy of this just for fun holy cow is next <laughs> two and a white creature ox angel with flash flying when holy cow enters the battlefield you gain two life and scry one this is a two two it's a fun card name it's a fun card it's pretty cool probably not one of the worst you know uh flash targets as well you know if you're playing decks that are just you know popping things in and out um over and over again being able to gain life and scry is pretty good effect next is insatiable avarice is a single black spree card with plus two search your library for a card then shuffle and put that card on top and plus black black target player draws three cards and loses three life so for five mana you can tutor up whatever card you want on top then draw three cards and lose three life so you're basically tutoring and getting to draw those cards or you can just tutor and put whatever you want on top this is a cool card i mean this is a tutor we haven't really seen something like this before you know obviously most of them are yeah either tutor up and put it on top or tutor it up and put it in your hand. So this is, you know, not as good as those, but this is a pretty cool card. You get some additional cards along with the cost. So something I think people are gonna have to be, you know, careful of. Tutors are very powerful cards and putting a tutor in standard that's this good is a uh, pretty great. Next is make your own luck. Three green, blue, sorcery. Look at the top three cards of your library. You may exile a non-land card from among them. If you do, it becomes plotted, put the rest into your hand. Now you are paying quite a bit to cast this spell, but the benefits could be pretty great. If you're playing a big creature deck, especially Simic maybe, I could definitely see this being great because plotted cards are already paid for. You just cast them for free on a later turn. So a uh, pretty cool effect. I think this could be a cool card in a lot of big creature decks. I think more small creature spell slingers, this isn't going to be as powerful. So I'd probably stay away from it in those types of decks. Mobile Homestead. Two generic artifact vehicle. Mobile Homestead has haste as long as you control a mount. Whenever a mobile homestead attacks, look at the top card of your library. If it's a land card, you may put it on the battlefield tap. Then crew it for two. This is an okay kind of ramp card early on. It is colorless, but otherwise, it's okay. I don't really know what else to say. Plan the heist. Two blue blue sorcery surveil three. If you have no cards in hand, then draw three cards. Plot four three and a blue yeah i love this card you can surveil and then draw a bunch of cards you can plot it away so you can cast it for free on a later turn maybe when you don't have anything left in your hand love this effect quilled charger three and a red creature porcupine mount when quilled charger attacks while saddled it gets plus one plus two and gains menace until end of turn yeah pretty cool effect makes it a five five if you saddle it up gives you some good benefit for those little creatures later on in a game rankish crew two in a black enchantment when rankish crew enters the battlefield create a one one red mercenary creature token with tap target creature you control gets plus one plus zero until end of turn activate only as a sorcery and whenever an outlaw you control dies each opponent loses one life and you gain one this very much reminds me of all of those black enchantments that just do this effect anyways but it is a little bit more limiting because they have to be outlaws so i don't know about that seems okay of a card i don't know where this home really is otherwise rattleback apothecary is two and a black creature gorgon warlock with death touch whenever you commit a crime 
target creature you control gains your choice of menace or lifelink until end of turn. Sometimes you need this effect in these kinds of decks, and it's nice to be able to get that by uh, just targeting stuff. So, pretty cool card. Ruthless Lawbringer. One white black creature vampire assassin. When Ruthless Lawbringer enters the battlefield, you may sacrifice another creature. When you do, destroy target non land permanent. I really like this effect. I think basically getting rid of something really bad on the board, especially in these colors that can sometimes struggle on, you know, enchantments mostly, you know, maybe some artifacts. This is a this is a cool effect. Really like it. Scorching shot. Red red sorcery. Scorching shot deals five damage to target creature. Yeah, seems great. Two mana to deal five damage to a creature. Seems powerful. Especially maybe in some decks that care about you dealing excess damage. You know, you get to do that very cheaply. So very cool. Slick shot lock picker. Two in a blue creature human rogue. When slick shot lock picker enters the battlefield, target instant or sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until end of turn. The flashback cost is equal to its mana cost. Then you can also plot it for two in a blue. Obviously, this isn't uncommon, but it's still a pretty good effect. You know, being able to give something flashback. And again, you can kind of wait for a rainy day when you need to flashback something and don't want to pay the extra three by plotting it earlier in the game. So next up, we have Slick Shot Show Off. One in a red creature bird wizard with flying haste. And whenever you cast a non-creature spell, Slick Shot Show Off gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. Again, you can plot. I'm guessing all of these Slick Shot, all these Slick Shot cards are going to be able to be plotted. Maybe this will be a set of cards, but pretty good effect in any Spellslinger deck. Next up is Trained Airnex. One in a white creature, Cat Beast Mount. Whenever Trained Airnex attacks while saddled, it gains first strike until end of turn. Scry 1. First strike, 3 1 for 2 mana. Seems pretty powerful to me. I don't know how likely you're going to be able to actually saddle this on, you know, turn 2, but maybe turn 3, you cast this, you saddle it with a creature you just cast, and you get to deal some damage. And the last card for today is Unfortunate Accident, a black spree card. Plus, plus two and a black, destroy target creature, plus one, create a one, one red mercenary creature token with that ability I've read eight times by now. Oh my goodness, that is a lot of cards. And I know I said that was the last couple cards, but we did get some token cards. I'm not sure how these work. Maybe I'll talk about it in my video tomorrow if they reveal that. But we got some bounty cards. Maybe this is going to come out in a pre-release deck or some other effect. But we have Bounty, Lisa, Sterling Collector. Bounty Mirren Tilaz Jr. and Bounty the Outsider. So all of these bounties has some sort of effect where if you complete the effect, maybe you get to collect a reward. And I don't know what that means yet. Maybe we're going to get a, another card that tells us what a reward is. But these are kind of cool cards that are kind of mysterious. And I'm very excited to see, you know, how these work. So stay tuned to see that. But that is it. I want to say thank you so much for watching. Before you leave, if you're still watching, please consider leaving a comment. What was your favorite card from today? What is an outlaw you want to see represented in this set? You know, anything that you would comment helps me out immensely in addition if you would consider leaving a like sharing this video with a friend and subscribing that would also mean the world to me these videos take a long time to make and you know anybody who watches to this point is incredible and i'm so thankful to you so thank you thank you thank you in today's scryfall card of the day is ukatabi effort the ukatabi effort and i have something in common both of our mothers wanted to give us back miri of the weatherlight thank you so much for watching and as always, I'll see you later, Planeswalkers.